As I crept through the dimly lit metro tunnel, the weight of my gear pressing against my shoulders, I couldn't help but feel the heavy silence surrounding me. Every step echoed in the empty space, a constant reminder of the world that once thrived above ground. My black combat gear hugged my body snugly, the assault rifle and pistol strapped securely to my sides. With each passing minute, I could feel the weight of the gas mask on my face, a necessary evil in this toxic environment. Every 30 minutes, I had to pause to change the filter, a task that always left me vulnerable. My heart skipped a beat when I spotted a mine lying in our path. With no other choice, I raised my assault rifle and took aim, the sound of gunfire shattering the eerie silence. Dog tensed beside me, but he knew better than to bark, understanding the gravity of our situation. With a precise shot, I disabled the mine, but the explosion that followed shook the place. Uh, after the explosion, my gas mask was also covered in grime, hindering my breathing. I took a moment to catch my breath and wiped the gas mask clean before pressing forward. I carefully disarmed the bombs, my hands steady despite the tension in the air. Dog stood guard, his watchful gaze ensuring our safety as I worked. With each trap disarmed, we moved forward, silent partners in the fight for survival. Dog sniffed the air, his ears perked up in alertness. He nudged my leg, a silent warning of danger ahead. Together, we approached a tripwire, its thin thread barely visible in the dim light. As soon as we disabled the trap, we climbed into the carriage to loot it. Dog sniffed around, his tail wagging in excitement as he picked up the scent of something promising. Together, we looted the wreckage, uncovering a cache of canned food and clean water. Got to the other side of the carriage and dropped down, unfortunately, we came across a skeleton wearing military gear guarding so few supplies. After looting the supplies around the skeleton, we realized we had hit a dead end. We had to double back to the area where I disabled all the bombs. Why did we have to come down to this stupid place? We should have just stayed above the surface. I grumbled to myself, the frustration evident in my voice as we navigated back to the area. As I surveyed the scene, a thought crossed my mind. Are those radiation barrels? I muttered to myself, instinctively taking a step back, not willing to risk finding out firsthand. Dog's growl grew low and menacing as we approached a door, his instincts on high alert. As I got closer, I could hear voices on the other side, murmuring in hushed tones. We exchanged a glance, both knowing that danger lurked beyond that threshold. We were met with the sight of a group of armed men, their expressions a mix of surprise Alt. and confusion as they stared back business. at us. We don't take layabouts here. Buy something, or we'll stay out. Go speak to the mayor if you're looking for work. The guard directed me to the appropriate individual within their group yeah. who could provide uh, further details and assistance regarding work opportunities. I made my way towards the designated individual who could offer job opportunities. I couldn't help but take in the sights of the underground base. It was unlike anything I had ever seen before. What is it? 
Welcome to our little independent station. It's the only true safe place left in the metro. We have a few shops around, plus Vladivir and Rakimenov's bar and few. But don't go causing trouble, cause I'll have you thrown in prison. Or shot. Depends how I feel like. You may have heard legend of a second metro, deep beneath the one you know so well. Running here, we have access to that legend. Our scavengers, the stalkers, head down there and bring back all types of artifacts and supplies that we either use ourselves or sell. From what the stalkers have seen, it appears that the deep metro is the remains of a weapons research facility from before the war, a D6. We could always do with more stalkers, if you're willing to lend a hand. Da, there are some tough shits down in D6 that have recently moved into our main scavenging areas. They're killing all of our stalkers and stopping us from getting the supplies we need. We could really do with the bastards being taken out. And you look like the suicidal type. If you can take them all out, that will reward you handsomely. If you want to help, talk to Sergei and he will gear you up for the work. Tell him I sent you. To my surprise, it became apparent that the person I had spoken with for work was actually the leader of this underground base. He directed me to speak with Sergei if I was interested in taking on any tasks. As I navigated the dimly lit areas, I made a conscious effort to keep my gun holstered and turned off my flashlight, allowing the small pockets of light to illuminate the darkness and reveal the intricacies of the underground base. What's this? A new face? The one and only. I sell the only stalker gear endorsed by Dimitri himself. Ha <laughs> ha, good one. Well, if you're going to head down there, you're going to need this key. I've got all the supplies you'll need. No refunds. After speaking with Sergei, I obtained all the necessary information about the job. As I signed the contract, Sergei explained, Great, it's not just one job, but a bunch. What makes it worse is that you'll have to clear out sections of the metro infested with different kinds of crazy creatures. Before heading out to face the daunting task ahead, I decided to make a stop at the underground bar. There, I planned to have a drink, unwind, and rest for a couple of hours preparing myself both mentally and physically for the challenges that lay ahead. So, um, this radio station, we, we don't really make any caps, and uh, there are, uh, well, some people help me stay in the air. People like, uh, like this. After finishing my drink at the underground bar, I decided it was time to get some rest before tackling the daunting task ahead. Before heading to bed, I stroked Dog affectionately and told him, good boy, good night, before setting out a bowl of food for him. With that, I found a quiet corner to curl up in and drifted off to sleep, knowing that I would need all the rest I could get for the challenges that awaited me in the metro tunnels. I woke up bursting with energy, ready to tackle the task of clearing out the sections of the metro. With determination fueling my steps, I set out towards D6, the name of the metro section I would be clearing. Each stride forward was filled with a sense of purpose, knowing that every step brought me closer to fulfilling my mission and making the underground tunnels safer for all who traveled through them. I see Dimitri has found another offering to the tunnels. I bet he hasn't even told you what's down there. The 
there are some new phenomenon within the tunnels, the likes of which are not seen on the surface. Should you or any other living thing stray into one of these phenomenon, they would be lucky to escape with their lives. Sounds wicked, yes? But you know, it's not any more evil than, say, fire. The stalkers who live the longest know safe paths through the phenomenon. Some of them may even have been marked out. The most interesting thing about the phenomenon is that some of them form artifacts, objects with strange properties and high price tags. For someone new to the tunnels, you should be thinking about heading west. It's less dangerous than going east. But most importantly, watch your back and don't turn out your light. It is only busy with the dead. Unexpectedly, I bumped into another person in the dimly lit tunnels. He had a weathered look about him, and his eyes held a mix of caution and wariness. He explained to me the dangers lurking below, and that I wasn't the first person to be sent to clear the metro. With a knowing glance, he looked at me and said, You won't be the last. Good luck. His words hung in the air, a sobering reminder of the perilous task we both faced in the depths of the underground. The elevator doors opened to reveal another decent-sized area adorned with a couple of man-made wooden buildings. Taking in my surroundings, I noticed the faint hum of activity echoing through the space. With determination in my stride, I made my way towards the left side tunnel door. Gripping the handle firmly, I pushed it open and proceeded down the tunnel, the darkness swallowing me whole as I ventured deeper into the unknown. As I ventured further into the tunnel, my path became obstructed by a pile of debris. With agile movements, I climbed up onto the pile, scanning the darkness for any signs of danger. It was then that I noticed something glowing faintly in the dark. Without hesitation, I raised my assault rifle and took careful aim, firing off shots to neutralize the threat before it could get any closer. Glowing mutated radiated dogs. One of them managed to get dangerously close, but I acted quickly, taking aim and firing off shots to defend myself. However, in the chaos of the moment, I felt a searing pain as one of the creatures managed to inflict an injury. As I dealt with the immediate threat, I noticed blood splattering on my gas mask, obscuring my vision. With a sense of urgency, I quickly cleaned the blood off my mask to ensure that I could see clearly and continue navigating the treacherous tunnels safely. I then healed my injuries as best as I could, taking a moment to tend to the wounds before continuing my journey. With each step forward, I braced myself for the possibility of encountering more mutated dogs lurking in the darkness ahead. Great, more bombs to disarm, I muttered under my breath, the irony not lost on me as I navigated through the tunnels. The realization that the dangers were far from over weighed heavily on my mind, adding another layer of urgency to my mission. I was relieved to discover additional gas mask filters, as well as provisions of food and water. These findings provided a much needed boost to my morale, knowing that I could sustain myself and continue my mission with renewed energy and determination. As I pressed forward through the tunnels, my heart sank as I stumbled upon another derailed train carriage. My eyes widened as I spotted a mine nestled within the wreckage, a grim reminder of the dangers that lurked in every corner of the underground world. With caution, I approached, steeling myself to disarm yet another potentially deadly trap.
More mutated dogs emerge from the darkness, their glowing eyes fixated on me with predatory intent. With swift and precise movements, I raised my weapon and unleashed a barrage of gunfire, determined to eliminate the threat before it could get any closer. Despite the overwhelming odds, I managed to kill them all just in time, breathing a sigh of relief as the echoes of the gunfire faded into the silence of the tunnels. Another fresh corpse lay motionless before me, a somber sight amidst the darkness of the tunnels. I turned back, realizing it was a dead end, and retraced my steps to explore the left-hand side of the tunnel split. Along the way, I stumbled upon another pistol, a serendipitous discovery amidst the desolation of the underground. As I made my way towards the left split, the sound of chatter reached my ears, causing me to proceed with caution. The voices sounded familiar, belonging to the notorious raider gang known as the Tunnel Sweepers. I had once thought they were nothing more than a myth, but now I knew the truth. Uh, with my senses heightened, I opened fire on them, taking aim and picking them off one by one. After killing all of the raiders, I began to search their small setup, scavenging their food supplies and taking whatever valuable items I could find. Once I had gathered what I needed, exhaustion washed over me like a tidal wave. I stumbled over to the fire pot in the middle of the room, cooked some food, and then collapsed into a restless sleep, the events of the day weighing heavily on my mind. I woke up suddenly to the sound of chatter, but to my horror, I found myself unable to move. It was as if I had been drugged and a wave of panic washed over me. In the distance, I could hear dog barking and growling, adding to my sense of unease. Then, the unmistakable sound of gunfire rang out, followed by a flurry of footsteps fading into the distance. It was as if someone had come to my rescue, but I was too disoriented to comprehend what was happening. As the world spun around me, I felt myself slipping back into unconsciousness. The events of the night shrouded in mystery and fear until I finally passed out once again.